Hello again. Listen to this amazing verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Amazing words. The great theologian Spurgeon once said this, It is the heart of the gospel. Everything you ever need to know about how to go to heaven is contained in those words. How important is this verse? Well, if you miss it, then you've missed the truth of God. If you get this right, you can be wrong in other places, perhaps, and still get to heaven. What is the message? This is the message. We're not quite, we're not called, rather, to fix all the things that are wrong in this world. We can't do it. We can't pass judgment on every passing trend. We're not sharing a message about a political power or might. The church has been given just one major task, to preach the gospel to every person on earth. We read that in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. What is the good news? I'm glad you asked. God made him who had no sin, Paul says. Jesus had no sin. When he walked on earth, Jesus was perfectly righteous. He was without fault. He was without sin, without evil, nothing wrong. Never did anything wrong. Never broke any of the laws of God. Never strayed, not even the slightest bit from God's will. Different to you and I. This is so important to understand because if Jesus had sinned, then he could not be our saviour. A sinner could not pay the sins of another sinner. The sacrifice needed to be made by one who was without spot or blemish, like the lambs that were slain on the night of that final plague in Egypt. We read about that in Exodus 12, rather, the story of the Passover. These lambs had to be one-year-old males in good health, free from disease and with no physical defects. The lambs were slaughtered in Egypt because they envisioned, if you like, the coming Lamb of God, who by his blood, by his sacrificial death, would take away the sin of the world. John 1, 29 puts it like this. John saw Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. When Pontius Pilate, who was the Roman governor, examined him, this is what he declared. I find no fault in him. When Herod and the Jewish leaders tried to put him or put him on trial, they could find no witnesses against him. So they rounded up false witnesses who lied under oath. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, the Roman centurion cried out, Truly, this was the Son of God. Jesus came to take away the sin of the world. He never committed a sin. Therefore, he became a sinner if you like. Paul's not suggesting that Jesus literally became a sinner. No, such a thing would not be possible. Jesus himself remained totally sinless while hanging on the cross. However, in a sense which is probably far beyond our understanding, he became sin for us. But perhaps the best way to understand all of this is to say that God treated his son as if he were a sinner. John 3.16, the favourite verse for many of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. When Jesus died on the cross, he took my place and he took your place. It's called substitution. Jesus died in the place of guilty sinners. Think of it this way. His nails were meant for you and me. The crown of thorns should have been upon our heads. The spear should have been thrust into our side. And the cheers and the insults were meant for us. Or oh, it should have been you or me hanging on that cross. But it wasn't. It was Jesus dying in our place. Now to us that picture is quite gruesome. But if we take out the blood then we've taken out God's plan of salvation. In Hebrews 9, 22, it is put this way. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. 
Jesus paid the penalty. He became our sin. Jesus became the sinless sin bearer. He paid the price that we owed to God, the debt that we could never pay. His death satisfied God's righteous declaration that sin must always be punished. He was made sin so that we might be made righteous. Some may well say, I can't accept that. Listen to this. There is no salvation apart from this because receiving this righteousness, this righteousness from Jesus by faith, is what salvation is all about. It's not as if God has a plan B for people who just don't like plan A. You come to God by the way of the cross or you don't come at all. Trusting Jesus means accepting the fact that he died on the cross. He really did pay a price for your sins and he really did pay a price for my sins when he went and was nailed to the cross in our place. So do you believe that Jesus Christ died for you? Are you willing to stake your life upon that fact? If you're ready to say yes, then you can become a Christian if you aren't now. Good Friday. How can it really be called a good day when an innocent man's life is taken? But God meant it for good because he loved us that much. Today, I really hope that you will hear this message that brings hope and salvation. The scriptures put it this way, today is the day of salvation. Now, it's no promise that there's going to be a tomorrow of salvation, but today is the day of salvation. Hear these beautiful words from Jesus as he was nailed and hanging on that cross. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. That's forgiveness, real forgiveness. And hear this, these favourite words of mine. It is finished. The work is done. It's complete. You know, I have lots of jobs around the place, and you may well have too, that are unfinished. I start a job and I just don't get to finish it. But when God does something, he brings it through to completion. He doesn't get sidetracked. He has a plan, a perfect plan. And his plan was that Jesus would come into this world, show us how to live, and then live in a sin-free way, and then take our sin upon himself on that cross. Jesus uttered those words, it is finished, complete. The job's been done. All I have to do is accept the free gift of forgiveness and grace. It's up to me just to receive it. Let me give you a simple prayer to pray if you would say to me that you'd like to accept that free gift. I want to say this prayer is not magic. You should only pray if it expresses the real desire of your heart. But if it does, then please pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for taking all of my sin away. I believe you are the Son of God and the Saviour of the world. I gladly take you as my Saviour. Come into my life. I want to be a follower of you, Jesus. Please help me to live a life that will be pleasing to you. Thank you for hearing this prayer. For I prayed in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, that's simple, isn't it? If you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, then you've become a Christian right now. I'd urge you to tell someone about that. I'd urge you to speak to Jesus. Good Friday. It is a good Friday. It's grotesque in one way because of the death of Jesus. But the good part about it is that he died that you and I might have life and have it in abundance. Yes, as someone once said, it is Friday, but Sunday's coming. The story is yet to be completed. For the truth and to know the answer, read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They're in the New Testament in your Bible. Brush the dust off if you have one, or go online if you don't have one. But read it in the language where you can understand it, a modern language, perhaps the New Living Translation. But I'd urge you to check out the truth and come to know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. May you richly be blessed at this Easter time.
Thank you.